Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to the Tract and Truth Tuesday edition for Bible Tract Echoes. Thanks so much for joining us. Normally on our Tract and Truth Tuesday, I take a side step away from our book study that we happen to be doing and read a portion of scripture out of some other part of the Bible, but I'm going to stay in the book of Leviticus and chapter 19. So if you can right now, go get your Bible, open it, Leviticus chapter 19, go to the end of the chapter. I'm going to be looking at chapter 19 later this week and give a broader a scope of view what's here, but I want to highlight a couple of verses if I can today. So while you're getting your Bible, get something on which to write some notes. Let's just enjoy the opportunity to encourage one another in being gospel tellers. That's what we use our Tuesday broadcast for. That's why we call each and every one of our Tuesday broadcast by the same title, our Tract and Truth Tuesday. And of course, that word tract refers to a gospel tract. That word tract is spelled T-R-A-C-T. A gospel tract is simply a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. I've got one of our tracts here. I want to talk about it a little more at length a little later in the broadcast. But uh, right now, let me tell you what happened. Earlier this week, uh, a lady called. She is from the Racine, Wisconsin area. She called, and she wanted just to pass along a report on how she was using some of our gospel tracts. Now, she was really excited about giving one of our Spanish tracts to an elderly man who lived near to her, but the man had been born in Mexico. Now, this man only spoke Spanish, and he was really glad to receive a tract in his own heart language. Well, the lady calling in told me how the man had received the Lord Jesus Christ right before he passed away. All of that happened because, well, things began by him reading the gospel tract. This lady knows enough of Spanish to help in the process. She was excited. She told me some other stories, but this one, obviously, about God using the tract, God using her to pass out the tract to see a man come to Christ, that just was an exciting thing for her. And frankly, it was for me as well. Oh, beloved, That's exactly how the whole idea of evangelism works. Whether you are verbally telling God's plan of salvation or you're handing out God's plan of salvation in a tract form, it is God who has to bring the increase. But God has chosen to limit himself to use us as his conduit to give the gospel truth to those who do not yet know Christ as Savior. I've got another story to tell you later on on the program, but right now, get your Bible if you can, open with me to Leviticus chapter 19. I want to start reading at verse 32. I know it's in the middle of things, but if your Bible's open there, listen, please. Remember, these verses are written to the Jewish people to help them as they wander through the wilderness for 40 years and once they entered into the promised land. Leviticus 19, verse 32 says this, Thou shalt rise up before the hoary head, the white-haired person, and honor the face of the old man, and fear thy God, I am the Lord. But listen to what the next two verses say. And if a stranger, that is a non-Jewish person, if a stranger sojourn with thee in your land, ye shall not vex him, but the stranger that dwelleth with you shall be unto you as one born among you, and thou shalt love him as thyself, for ye were strangers in the land of Egypt, I am the Lord your God. That's an interesting word is God in there. 
if a person who was a non-Jewish person, an idol worshiper, was to be among them, whether it was a merchant or just somebody passing through, they were to show hospitality, but they were not to vex them. Do you know what that word vex can mean? It can mean to make that person feel like, well, like they're less than you are, that you're more important than they are. Oh, beloved, we who know Christ dare not ever let an attitude that since we have Jesus as our Savior, that we're better off than the people around us. Do you know the term born again? Now, that is actually the title of the gospel tract that's in my hand, Born Again. As I said a moment ago, the word gospel tract simply refers to a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. And for 80 years, you heard me right, for 80 years, we've been publishing gospel tracts. Most of those years, we've published tracts in different languages like Spanish, and we've been giving them away all over the world. And obviously for us to do that, a number of God's people as individuals, local churches support us as one of their missionaries so that we can pass pay the printing cost and the light bill and so that I can get paid and so on. We want to put gospel tracts into your hand, and here's why. You and I do not have the opportunity to sit down eyeball to eyeball with all the people we'd like to and tell them just in loving terms out of our own mouth the gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the gospel that says, yes, we are dead in trespasses and sins, but God loves us so much that while we are yet in our sins, God Almighty sent his only begotten son, the second member of the Trinity. He took on flesh and dwelt among us for one key purpose. He came to be our ransom payer. He came to pay our sin price. He came to be our substitute on Calvary. Calvary. The sinless Savior died in the place of sinners, and so precious, so valuable is Jesus Christ that when he died, he could pay for the sins of the world. And then he was buried and rose again, thus proving he really can give people everlasting life. But that payment and that everlasting life only becomes practical for us as an individual person when we, number one, know the gospel, then number two, receive the gospel. How shall they hear without a preacher? Well, your job and my job is to give out, to disseminate the gospel message to the entire world. This particular gospel track, Born Again, is a quality track. I'm going to say more about it here in just a moment. I read some verses here a moment ago, Leviticus chapter 19, and in these verses, God is telling the Jews how to live. In verses 32 to 37, God is telling them things that they were to do, things that he was promoting among them. They were to be doing these things, as I said, during the 40 years of wandering, as well as once they got into the promised land. Jot down some words here. I've got, a, frankly, a couple different outlines. Here are some words beginning with the letter letter A, like in the word apple. Verse 32 talks about the aged, our relationship to older people. And our relationship to older people is connected to our relationship to God, verse 32 says. And then verses 33 and 34, my word is alien. How do we treat the strangers among us? And finally, verses 35 and 36, which I did not read, my word there is accounting. Because we're related to God, our business practices are to be affected, how we do our accounting. Now, here in Leviticus, there are some strange passages. Frankly, there's some hard passages for us to look at and find some practical applications from. But the verses that I read, they're not hard to understand. So many people are surprised when they read the words that I read there out of verse 34, the words that say this, thou shalt love him, the stranger, as thyself. Thou shalt love him as thyself. Now, most people think that that statement is only in the New Testament. We often associate those words with the story of the Good Samaritan, but it's always been part of God's will for his people, no matter the era, no matter the dispensation in which God's people were living. They were to love the stranger as themselves. And a lot of you listening 
have sent emails telling me that you like it when we give outlines. Well, let me give you another three-word outline just based upon verse 34. The three words are this, love, land, and Lord. Love, land, and Lord. Where do I get the word love from? Well, God says that God's people are to love others, even those who were aliens or strangers living among them, like the man from Mexico that I told you about that this lady called in and she gave him a gospel tract. He was an alien, a stranger in her land, but she was loving him for God's sake. Uh, The second word is the word land. God, through Moses, reminds the Jews of their old life. They used to be slaves in the land of Egypt. They served harsh taskmasters. The Jews were to remember where they used to be so they could love and show mercy on others still bound in in an idolatrous land. While they were in Egypt, God showed mercy to them. The other word is the word Lord. The Jews had a God. They had a Lord who was over them. Jehovah is his name, and Jehovah was their master. But oh, what a different kind of a master he is in comparison to the Egyptian taskmasters. God's thoughts towards Israel were only for good and not for evil. And God acted to provide for them and not them to provide for God's well-being. Let me tell you another story. This morning, as I was in the office, I happened to be the closest to the phone. I got a call from Southern Illinois. A man was calling to share how he enjoys our broadcast and how he's begun to pass out our gospel track that he especially likes the one called the credit card track there, the charge it track. He told how people just frankly seem to never refuse to receive the track when he offers it to them. He went on to tell stories of how he was able to be a blessing to people. Friend, are you giving out gospel tracts? It's a tremendous evangelism tool. It'll broaden your effort. I mentioned this particular track, Born Again, a moment ago. If you look at this gospel track, the face of it is just so beautiful. There are some plants coming out of the soil, the first plants of the spring season. Gorgeous uh, picture there. But then as you open the tract up on the inside, there are four sections. Each one is titled. The first one's titled this, Are You Born Again? The second title is this, what is it? And now in between each of these titles is an explanation. Are you born again? It talks about a man who was religious but not born again. But then when it says, what is it? So many people who say they're born again cannot explain what it means to be born again. Here in two paragraphs, we explain what it means in simple terms to be born again. The next paragraph is entitled, how does it happen? That's important to know. And the last paragraph is entitled, God's Way. It has this verse, Christ died for our sins. He was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's God's way of salvation through the person of Jesus Christ and the work of Jesus Christ when he died on the cross. Oh, friend, there is a simple prayer at the end of this gospel track that a person can use with a broken, repentant heart, and they pray a prayer like this, God will save them from all their sin. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.